Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here at Power Mods. That season is just about upon us. We wake up in the morning now, we see the leaves falling off the trees are just about there. It's cold. Feels good. Feels good. You know that the snow is gonna, gonna come, the frost is gonna come, and uh, it's just about that time. It's gonna be happy days again, right? And you know what? Winter can't be any worse than last year, so we're gonna have a good one this year. There's no doubt about it. That's the Power Mods forecast. Just thought I'd go over a few things, what I do to my sleds before we go ripping this year. Well, I have the old rev here and I want to show you something. Flip my choke. So that's two poles. This is a, a two pole sled when it's cold. And you know what? It just always starts like that. It's because I look after this girl. Now before I park this thing in the spring, I put a gas stabilizer in it. I do a bunch of other things that I've gone over in, in past videos. Depending on where you had your sled parked, mine is in the garage. There are really no mice issues here. Not so far. So if you packed for breeze or fabric softener sheets in, or say steel wool in your exhaust to keep the mice from getting in, or the squirrels, you want to make sure you take all that stuff out. There are a few other things that I do that are kind of important. Um, if you haven't started your sled, all summer long. Don't just hop on it, especially if it is electric start. Don't just jump on it and turn that key and start, start it rolling. If something has happened like the, the needle and seat have stayed open in your carbs, some uh, gas can just funnel right into your, uh, in your cylinders, they'll hydro lock, you'll bend a, a connecting rod, and that's not a good thing, right? So you wanna make sure you can just hop on it, give her a few pulls, oh yeah, feels good, feels good. Or, even better, pop your spark plugs out, give her a good old pull, see what happens, see if anything comes out of there, see if it's gobbed up in oil, sometimes the injection system leaks and uh, it just gets really dirty in there, sometimes your crankcase fills up with, with gas and it's, it, it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. But pop those plugs out, like put some new plugs in it, keep the other ones as spares, uh, check the connections on your wires, make sure they're nice and tight, get in there and check your compression not a bad thing to do even if you have a newer sled and it's accessible some of the new sleds it's not very easy to get in but check your compression it's going to tell you sort of what's going on um, the health of your engine if you will if you got one that's way down on compression now's a good time to get into it because you don't want to wait to that first ride when something goes down on you and then you're going to be out a few weeks looking for parts not a good thing check your belt and check the belt deflection every sled is a little different Team clutches are really easy to set the deflection on, the secondaries. You want to get in there and you want to set it to factory specs. Every sled is different. I'm not going to show you how to do it. I've done it in other videos for the types of sleds that I have. But always refer to your owner's manual. And they're kind of limiting the information in the owner's manuals now because they want the dealers to get the service. And you know what? Forget it, man. Do all this stuff yourself. If you can't get it out of your owner's manual, get a service manual online. They're about five or six bucks download it. I download them for every machine I have. I'm not a mechanic uh, by trade, so I need that information and I, I tend to use it, right? Um, so get in there. If you've got a lot of K on your belt, a lot of kilometers, a lot of miles on there, change out the belt. Use it as a spare. Put a new belt on. Make sure the deflection is set. You want it to be just right. When you start your sled up, you've got your new belt on it. You don't want it creeping forward. Okay? You don't want it squealing. You want it just set right, and your manual is going to tell you exactly how to do that. As far as your fuel system goes, you want to make sure that that thing's up to snuff. Depending on how you park your machine at the end of the season is going to sort of dictate what it is that you do to it. If you put high test non-ethanol fuel in with a stabilizer, you should be pretty good. You're probably going to not have an issue. If you ran it right dry, then just put some new high test in there. And you know what? I put a little bit of um, fuel stabilizer in anyway. Just to, you know, just to help it out, it's one of those things that I do. Maybe a gas line antifreeze, maybe there might be some condensation, depending on uh, what kind of area you're in. If you're in a really damp, moist area, you gotta think about water, you gotta think about how it collects. If the temps go up and down in the mornings, you gotta, you gotta you know, think about that kind of thing. That's why you either leave the tank full, or what I do is leave it right empty. Take a quick look around all your wiring harnesses, make sure that no mice have gotten in there. If you see uh, little bits of corn niblets and uh, 
acorns and pine cones and all that in there, you know something like a squirrel has been messing around, you want to take a good look. Squirrels love to chew on insulation on wires and they can really screw up a sled. If you have an electric start, you want to make sure that you, uh, hopefully you had your trickle charger on it all summer long, you want to make sure that battery is all topped up and ready to go. Another thing you want to do is check the carbides on your sled and your studs. You know, if they're worn down, now's the time to take care of them. Get that carbide sharpening tool by Bite Harder. Go over them, make sure they're tickety-boo and ready to go. Make sure they're not bent. Sometimes the mounting um, studs on them get broken off if you've taken a bit of a side impact. You don't, you don't want that to happen. You want to make sure that those carbides are firmly attached to your sled because if they take another hit, they can get bent off the side, sort of stop you and ruin your day. Something like these old revs, I know you, a lot of you guys look at the revs, and one little thing you can look at, this is kind of along a buyer's thing, but um, one thing you want to look at, see if your nun is bent. I'll like show you real quick here. Um, if you guys maybe took a little bit of an impact, you, know, you want to check the distance between the shock and these A-arms. You want to make sure that it's about equidistant. Equal distance on both sides. If you go to the other side, oh, look at that. Not the same here. It's a little tighter on this side, a little more on that side. It's because we took a hit on this one. The good old Simon, he took a crack on that last year and uh, he sort of bent, bent that bulkhead or the nun in that. I'm not quite sure what's going on. But that can affect your belt tension, uh, and your alignment, and also you know the deflection on the belt as well. So if you're playing with it, you, know, you don't know what's going on, check that out. That's just one thing to look at, you know, depending on what kind of sled you have. Some Polaris is still kind of bend that way. This is an older ref. Go through your airbox. Make sure there are no squirrel tracks inside your airbox. They get in there. Mice get in there. Squirrels get in there. Um, sometimes even the uh, mud wasps get into things, little holes on your, uh, your altitude adjusting stuff on your carb and all that. They get in there and they plug up those little holes. You want to make sure that those are fine. Oh, look at that. See, I don't have a spare belt in here. So when I change that belt, Last time we were out was uh, the Calabogie Hill Drags, and I just pulled off the new belt that I had as a spare in there and I used it. Make sure all your lights work, your brake lights, your headlights. Make sure your handlebar warmers work, everything, all your ancillary devices. You wanna make sure that they all work. Then you get back, you work your way back onto the sled, uh, or to the back of the sled. I'll just move this little mic here. Check your track. You want to check the lugs on your track. You want to make sure that there are none that are torn, ready to fly off. Same goes for studs. You want to make sure that the studs aren't going to peel off or they're not tearing out of your track. Because if they come out of your track, they're going to put a hole in your cooler. And that's not a good thing. You're going to blow that cooler, you're going to blow your motor. You're not even going to know. It's not going to take very long. So you want to check the condition of your studs. If they're really dull and you've got a good quality track, you might want to take that bite harder tool as well and uh, sharpen those up because you don't always need to go out and buy new ones. Check your sliders, check for wear on your sliders, pretty easy to do. There's a line that usually goes right across your slider, you can sort of measure that by your eye and see if it's worn out. Check all your idler wheels, pick the back of the sled up, just turn your idler wheels by hand, make sure they're fine. Check your chain case fluid level, make sure there's not too much shavings in there, it's not a good thing, shavings really dirty colored oil, you might want to change it and really keep a good eye on it. If you haven't gone over the bearings for your uh, jack shaft and your axle shaft in a few years, you've got a lot of kilometers on it, I'd start to think about looking at those uh, tooth sweet, which means right now, I think. Uh, go over those and change them out because you don't want to get into this stuff when your season starts, boys. It's like, you know, that's especially with your suspension. That's a really easy thing to go over. Make sure that all those bearings are good in there. If you have to loosen off the track tension and, and spin those, um, those idler wheels to make sure that they're in good shape, do it. It's well worth it. We blew a, a rear idler on this last year and it sort of put a damper on our day. Didn't have a spare bearing with us. Now we're a little tight in here because we got all our gear and bikes and all that stuff. But go over and check out your suspension. Anything that needs grease, hammer the grease to them. Well, not too much, but you want to squeeze the grease into them. You should have done that in the spring to get all the water out from all the ice and snow and whatnot that gets inside there. But if you haven't, put some grease in and it wouldn't hurt to just sort of pop a little bit of grease in there as well. Check all your bushings and your suspension, make sure that they're all nice and tight. They're not really loose and sloppy. And check these out here. You know, wherever you see these bolts going into these little shafts here, you want to get in there 
and make sure that they're nice and snug and tight and, and uh, torque to factory spec and that they're not loose and boring a hole because they'll overbore a hole out of that and then you know what it's not a good day especially if you're a trail rider or a mountain rider you're jumping off a uh, what do you call those things cornices and all that you also want to check your main suspension mounting holes torque those babies up no doubt we have had these come off before there's the up uh, the front and the rears step back look at your sled look at the way that it sits if you're looking at the front of your sled and you got those two shocks sitting right there those are air shocks you want to have the same pressure on both sides you want to make sure that it's not sitting crooked even if you have another kind of shock you want to make sure that you know you're just taking a good overall look at the condition of your machine these ski spindles right here there are bushings in here you can see that right there see these little rubber bushings sometimes you take a hit and those get snapped inside and then they come out you want to make sure that you've got those in there if not when you hit a bump the wrong way they could come straight up damage to the machine you go over the handlebars then you're in big trouble also go through and make sure that all the bushings are good and tight on the front suspension make sure that all the bolts are good and tight on there especially if you ride hard and do silly things like we do if you have a sled with a pull start on it and it's not electric check the condition of that cord make sure that it's good I think there's a Cobra cord out there I think that's what they call it we put that on one of our sleds it's got a synthetic rope on it that stuff lasts this factory stuff not so good they don't last as long and take it from me I go through two or three recalls a year for whatever reason I have really bad luck with them those stupid cords drive me crazy you want to make sure that that's in good shape so you know what you're not left on the side of the trail trying to start your sled with the clutch and that little stupid starting tool okay. Check the condition of your brake pads. Make sure that your fluid is topped up in your brake reservoir. Make sure you got good pressure on there, that it doesn't go right to the handlebar. Make sure that your handlebars are good and tight. There's no movement on them, especially if you got these high risers on them. Nothing worse than going over the handlebars and flattening them out. I did that on the IQR one year. I hit hard, I went over the top. The handlebars flattened out, and when that happens, the throttle stays on, and it sort of went into the trees and that wasn't groovy. I wish I had the camera on for that one. Now there are other things I'm sure you go into your owner's manual, go in there, check the kilometers or miles on your machine, match it up with the service uh, manual and do what needs to be done to it. And that's about it. You know, do all the things I said which is sometimes a little bit more than what they say um, but it's something that I feel is important. Um, but you know what boys, it's all about having fun. You can't have fun if your sled is stuck in the shop. We see this a lot on the YouTube and on social media where first ride of the year, pistons down. I get those emails all the time. It was the first ride of the year. I took it out for rip. It was running fine last year. And this year, I got a hole in my piston. What's going on? Well, probably what happened was one of your carbs got some stuff in it. Something happened in the pilot jet, ran a little lean, and you nuked your piston because you didn't drain the gas or because you didn't put fresh gas in it or because you didn't start it a couple times during the season. So maybe some sediment got in there. There's all kinds of things that can happen to these sleds. And it's all usually very simple. It's because we ride them really hard all winter long and then we park them for a whole bunch of months and then we get back on them and ride them really hard again. Poor old girls, they take a beating. You know what I'm saying? You now if you got a turbo on your sled, you might just want to check, you know, some of them have a a separate reservoir for your turbo, for your oil, your your uh, maybe some might run off coolant. I'm not quite sure what kind you would have on yours. Just check that. You want to make sure you do check your coolant level as well. I run Evans Waterless Coolant in mine, so uh, it's it's a really good stuff. There's not a whole lot of pressure in the system. Well, there's basically no pressure, and uh, it doesn't have really a really tendency to leak out of your machine. But you want to make sure that you go in there and make sure that coolant's in, especially for that first startup of the year, right? Uh, let me see here. It's been a while since I got through.
ันSo the extra drivers are slipping inside there, and my brake is soft. I gotta pump it up a little bit. Very interesting. Gotta go through and check that out. When you do ride, make sure you wear a helmet. I didn't because, uh, just because of the way I am sometimes. But that's it. Boys and girls, honest. Make sure you go check us out on Facebook, PowerMods.com on Facebook, or just PowerMods. Got a lot of cool pictures, got some giveaways coming up, got some cool, pretty cool projects on their way right now. The Elan, the Mega Elan with the 800 or the 925cc Big Bore Articat engines going in it. And uh, yeah, good times from the shop here as usual. There we go. Yeah, I'm skipping back. Did you hear it? No, nope. I wasn't really listening for it. We may be running it a little too loose. It looked really loose. Yeah. <laughs> Back it up. Always make sure you're sitting down. Because if you're doing one of these and you fall into your throttle, you look really funny to all your friends. And if you're going to do that, make sure you got our own cam, boys. I need that kind of footage. Okay, Jamie, let's get out of here.